Hello tech friends. Today I am excited to present to you this, the Amstrad Notebook Computer NC100. Look, it says it's user friendly. This came out in 1992. We've got 64 kilobytes of RAM in here. We've got a word processor, a calculator, a diary, an address book. And this was very much designed according to Alan Sugar, Alan Michael Sugar, uh, as a very simple computer for people who don't like computers. Um, in fact, it comes with a letter in the beginning of the manual that's written by Alan himself. Dear new customer, it says, I'm first of all delighted to welcome you to the world of Amstrad with your purchase of this new notepad computer. This product is known inside our company as my baby. The background to its inception stemmed from my personal desire to be able to use a computer. Yes, I am embarrassed to say that as the chairman of one of Europe's largest manufacturers of computers, just, you know, dropping that in there, uh, I have never been able to use one. A while ago, I called a meeting with some of my engineering staff and explained that I wanted us to make a simple to use computer. And I think he actually flipping nailed it here. This thing, let's take a little look around, around it, okay? So it's about sort of A4 size, I would say. On the back, we've got a parallel port, a serial port. We've got six volt DC jack in. We've got a, a compartment there for the batteries. It takes four AA batteries. We've got the backup battery here, sadly, lost the back, but it still works, not a problem. Uh, we've got a port here as well. And I'm just gonna pop this open because I haven't had a look inside to see what's in here. It's gotta be some sort of interface, hasn't it? I would have thought. Um, oh no, wait, look, it's an IC um, and it's got Amstrad written on it, which you probably won't be able to see, um, but I can see it. <laughs> that is, that's quite cool. So you must have been able to replace it. Maybe that's the memory and that's uh, something that you could have upgraded, although I can't really see um, information about upgrading it in that way. But on the side, we've got contrast wheel there. Um, and it's got a memory card slot um, so you can sort of expand it I think and you can actually connect it up to a printer or a computer and communicate with it which I think is pretty exciting um, right let's power this thing on and we'll take a closer look okay ready there we go now I'll need to adjust the contrast so you can see this a little bit better it has not got a great display. It's not backlit, um, but according to Wikipedia, that means that it can run for about 20 hours on four AA batteries. I've got the power plugged in just to see if uh, it makes the display a bit brighter in case some of the batteries I was using um, weren't any good. But to be honest, it hasn't made, uh, <laughs> it hasn't made any difference. So hopefully you can see that. Um, so yeah, so just to uh, look at the actual sort of front of this, we've got a full QWERTY keyboard um, with uh, slightly spongy keys, but if you hit them hard enough, they work. I mean, let's bear in mind how old this is as well. So um, it's probably got a bit of gunk and uh, a bit a bit gummy in areas here. Um, we've got uh, the function button down here. And if you hold that down and you press one of these ones on the right, or actually some of the other buttons as well, but particularly the ones on the right, uh, you can go uh, via shortcuts to the word processor, the calculator, or the diary. And in fact, on the screen itself there, it says to use the word processor, press yellow and red, yellow and red. Uh, to use the calculator, press yellow and green. To use the diary slash clock address book, press yellow and blue. So this targeted directly at Alan Sugar here. <laughs> and his ability to use one of these things. Um, and actually the manual is divided into two sections. It's kind of got a basic, just get up and running with it um, point of view. And then you've got the extra sections, which Alan describes in his letter um, as written by the boffins. Um, great, that's a good word. You don't hear that very much outside of uh, the Beano. Right, so let's, what should we start with? Let's start with the calculator, shall we? So function and calculator. Uh, the green symbols there indicate the numbers. So that's almost like having numlock on on a on a modern laptop. Let's just stick some numbers in. Do some of the old maths. Um, I wonder if you can just do uh, press enter as well. Let's try that. Yes, indeed you can. It doesn't have a sort of counter. A lot of these things, calculators don't have a... If I repeatedly hit enter or um, equals 
sometimes it, it increments but i haven't seen that in these old devices um and we can try some other sums i mean they all work right um what's interesting is that it is using all of the display <laughs> to show those numbers, really making the most of what is apparently an 80 character column display by eight rows. And it's not very big, but it's certainly big enough. Well, it's almost too big for a calculator, um, but I'll show you the uh, the word processor as well and dazzle and amaze you with how that, how that works. Uh, in fact, let's go over to that now. Uh, if we start a new document, I can press the red button to do that. Um, and it's asking me to give it a name. Uh, let's talk about let's have one called holiday and there we go we've got the uh, the sort of entering section here and it even has a little prompt here that says start typing new text here I mean that is user friendly isn't it um, I went oh okay this is where the typing is uh, gonna require me to really hammer the keys I went on my holiday to Crete so the shift lock all uh, shift and caps lock and stuff that all all of that works um i had a a lovely time and if i i can still i can move the cursor keys around and uh, and type extra things uh, seem to have gone down onto another uh, another row there by mistake uh, it's very easy to press the wrong button see here on the um the uh, cursor keys up, down, left and right, they're in slightly unusual positions compared to a PC keyboard. But I'm sure you'd get used to that after a while. Um, but it's also got, uh, it can do formatting and things like that. So um, if I say the food was um, terrific, but I won't write the word terrific, I'll put it in bold. And one of these, here we are, if I hold down control and press seven, control and seven, um, wonderful it's actually showing it to me there in bold and then if i press it again control and seven it'll um go back to regular text uh, and i liked it very much oh yeah um what other formatting things have we got we've got underline let's try that that's control and eight um however control and eight to take that off again um i met a person who was not very nice this sounds like a horrible holiday he stole my uh have we got italic yes we do that's important control and uh the minus button there my trousers 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 there we go so you can see we've got um quite a wide-ranging uh set of abilities uh, there in terms of the formatting right um but you've also got a spell check function in here as well um let's uh put a word in that is bonkers um and then we'll press control and uh spell text is that yeah look here we go it's checking it <gasps> it's found that bad word yeah let's look up the word but see how it's kind of it's not relying on you knowing the key combinations for different things it's presenting everything on the screen right um and it's doing it in such a way that it's dead easy you kind of always know where you are um so let's uh it couldn't find a match for that let's edit the word and put in um potato in oh potato you really do have to hammer these keys in let's delete some of that potato um and then it's replaced the word that obviously works very well see in the top left hand corner rather than having the escape key we've got the word stop again i assume that's because that was deemed to be a simpler word for people to understand and they might not have been familiar with the computer or what the word escape would generally mean and every time you hit stop it actually goes back to the previous uh, screen that you were on so it's dead simple and it's quite easy to navigate um one of the features it's got is that you can print documents and that's what the parallel and possibly even the serial port on the top before you could connect it to a printer um and uh <laughs> in, the, in the manual it says rather helpfully that if you're looking to uh, print something um it, it's useful to have a printer um which i think is honestly um excellent excellent advice 
Uh, in fact, parts of the manual are kind of quite apologetic about how much uh, they are dumbing things down for you um, and sort of, you know, separating that the, the simpler explanation with the boffin level detail. Um, but I think that's uh, quite a nice touch. Um, right, so let's have a look at some of the other features on here, shall we? Should we go into the diary? And we've got um, an address book. It's funny that, isn't it? That address book sits under diary. Um, almost like you want to make sure you've got buttons that are very simple. Uh, so simple, in fact, that some things have to be clubbed together. I mean, it's understandable that the calendar and the diary are there um, and the time manager. Uh, a time manager. Let's have a look at that, shall we? Are there as well. To set an alarm, we can press red and we can set an alarm clock. Um, let's do that, actually. So it's 14.33. Let's change it to 14.34. If we... 34 once only um, and then if we hit enter um, and we press this oh, M for message wake up um, and then we press stop and come out of that so in 10 seconds that should go off there we go we do have a speaker in there that's great we can press stop to exit it um, that, this could act as your alarm clock sat by the side of your bed. That would be good, wouldn't it? Um, okay, uh, so we can set alarms and things like that. That's fair enough. We'll change the time zone. Uh, what about using the address book? Let's go and do that. Let's press red to go in. And again, you're on other devices of the same sort of era, you wouldn't have the screen real estate to be able to actually point out how you use it. So add slash edit address, press up or down to move and press stop to exit. So if I put in who should we have today andrew uh nixon hmm, interesting uh move down to the address lives at 15 bucket hat road if i can hit the right button uh the delete buttons we've got sort of um delete and backspace next to each other in the top right hand corner um move down uh, and that's in oh let's go to gloucester just to keep it real um, and then we can put a telephone number in bibbidi bobbidi boo we can put a fax number in as well bibbidi bobbidi boo and can we keep going down are there other things um no we're now on to the next person so if i then uh, just press stop we've got browse functions now which we didn't have before it was asking you to actually type in the first entry add new address edit address find address delete address browse left and right um press stop to exit and again, you just go straight back out to the to the menu there. Um, apparently, this has the ability to do mail merges. So if you were writing a document in the Word uh, processor, combine that with some address book uh, details, you could bang out a bunch of letters to a printer. I mean, that's that is quite a pretty well. That's a very impressive function, I think, um, in such a um, uh, an early device. Okay, what else have we got? To use the calendar slash diary, press green. Let's do that. Oh, I do love a calendar display. Look at that one, February 2023. I do like it when even an old device can cope with uh, dates that are sometime in the future. That's what happens if you make sure you have your four digit years rather than your two digit ones. Time zone London, we've got the time tick tock ticking away. Um, calendar, and if I can move around the different days and things like that, um, that seems pretty straightforward. Let's go and have a look at a particular day. And it says editing diary entry for 5th of February 2023. Um, and it says start typing uh, new text here. Well, that's actually, uh, oh, that actually was two weeks ago. So I probably can have a diary entry. I ate a muffin. Today it tasted of baby sick. Stop. <laughs> you might be saying to yourself um january so you, you can navigate using the uh the, the cursor keys here and it's telling you you can go via different years and things like that to make a, a diary entry select date using the up down left right keys and press uh, enter and we can see now we've got a little star on there to show us um that we've got an item in there but it, what it doesn't look like it, it it can do unless i'm missing something if i come back out of there calendar diary doesn't look like it if i go into one of the days i don't think i can start a uh, make a schedule for myself you know say 10 a.m i'm doing this um and then sort of search through it uh cook rabbit 
very strange uh, set of tasks at weird old tech towers today um you can see though it's then put the star in there as well and i can move on to different months and 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 do things like that so it's not like a proper scheduler i wouldn't say um but it does look like it's uh it's got sort of like a diary feature in fact it says diary doesn't it on the blue button so it must be true um let's have a look anything else to note on there probably not from this main bit but i was reading the instruction manual and it said that this thing has got a z80 processor and it has essentially bbc basic built into it now there's no button it looks like that you can press to bring up bbc basic but if you read the uh the manual carefully in the boffin section if i hold down function and press b what look at that i'm at the bbc basic prompt that is absolutely amazing hello tech friends let's uh put that in there 20 go to 10 it's a classic and then we'll just run that and there he goes hello tech friends that is cool to have a bbc basic uh microcomputer in the palm of your hand um as long as you've got incredibly large palms um it does have one of uh, a few example programs that you can type in if i just press stop that's here the equivalent of pressing um uh, break i guess it would have been on the bbc micro obviously basic as a programming language exists on loads of different computers but it's quite cool to have the bbc version because it feels like to me that seems like the the correct version if you like having grown up in a uk school um so i'm going to put in one of the programs that it suggests to type in um and uh and we'll take it from there Okay, I've typed in a little program from the manual. This is a reaction test timer. It's the shortest program that we've got in here. If I list it, it's essentially going to um, randomly pick a time period and then the program's going to run. And then it's going to say, press a key after that time period's run out and you've got to press it as quickly as possible. Bit of a reaction timer sort of deal there. Let's run it. Get ready, friend. Okay, I'm hovering on that oh press any key there we go you took 0.44 seconds should we have another go oh oh i'm getting better 0.43 seconds and um, one more bash at it it's very tense it's, oh 0.31 seconds there we are self-improvement in action and then if you want to come out of basic altogether you can just go back to one of the other ones that you've got here function word calc or diary so what do you think about that the amstrad notepad computer nc100 you couldn't slip it in your pocket but it's got a nice big display for the time it's got a nice big keyboard that's easy to type on you could probably knock out a few novels um some uh documentation probably about the amstrad i'd like to think that the amstrad manual was written on one of these that would be really cool and we've got a speaker in the corner as well for the alarm. So what more could you want? There we go. Amstrad Notepad Computer NC100. Did you have one of these? Do let me know. Thanks for watching. <laughs>